Yes, sir. Say, man. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, we, we, we back. Uh, you no know I'm saying? Finna, finna, finna talk about some things. And let's start off with prayer, man. Uh, God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Uh, thank you for being the awesome God that you are. And we thank you for sending your son, Jesus, who is our Lord, Savior, Redeemer, um, all that, the ransom, the propitiation, the price, the payment for our sins. Uh, Lord, we just give you all the glory and all the praise. And God, I just pray that you be with me uh, as I speak. ask you to guide my speech. I ask you to give me what to say, how to say it. May it be your spirit speaking through me. Um, yeah, I, may I open up my mouth and speak as your oracles. I just ask you to lead me and guide me in my speech and just give me what you have me to say, Lord, in the name of Jesus. All right, man. So I, I got a few I got a few things I want to talk about, you know, by the grace of God. I, uh, <clears throat> I just finished the, the set apart mixtape. You know what I'm saying? Uh, probably like last week. Today is is uh, Monday, October 30th. So I finished the mixtape last week. And uh, for this message, God, just he, he gave me a few things. He showed me some stuff about my youth, how I was set apart. You know what I'm saying? But on this message, I'm going to talk about a few things. I'm going to talk about like being set apart first. But then I'm just going to give some little tidbits about marriage and relationship. He showed me some stuff. And then I, uh, I'm going to give my little thoughts on on uh, as far as terrorism in America and attack on America and all that. I've been talking about that, but I'm, I'm going to speak on that. And then God dropped something on me about, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to give a word about... Uh, if God can hear sinners prayers, I'm, I'm going to speak on that. And then I'm going to speak on uh, how God's word is settled in heaven. His plan, his purpose is he works backwards, forwards. You know what I'm saying? Like everything is already done in the mind of God. And like it's like he rewinds it and, and replay it. You know what I mean? Like in the spirit, everything already done. And then it just plays out in the sequence of time, you know, cause God don't have time, you know what I mean? So time is for humanity, you know what I mean? But in the mind of God, everything was already done. It was already finished from the beginning. That's why Jesus is called the lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world. You know what I mean? So I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna get on that, you know what I mean? But the first thing I'm gonna talk about, man, is, uh, is being set apart. Like, uh, when, when you set apart, uh, there's defining moments. There's defining moments in your life. You know what I'm saying? That show you that you set apart. You not, you not like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, one of the, now that I look back, now that I look back, you know what I'm saying? One of the, one of the defining moments that I was set apart. I got to tell this story. I told it before, but uh, God just gave me some more wisdom about it. Now, check this out. Like, uh, now I, I had, I had a, like, I had a crew that I used to, well, I ain't going to say that. I just said I had some homeboys. We'll just put it like that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, now there was a situation where it was, it was two of my, it was, it was two of my homeboys. And, uh, there was this dude, uh, in the neighborhood where I used to live in these apartments and, uh, two of my homeboys, they had jumped dude. And I was supposed to be, I was supposed to be jumping in. Right. But something just held me back. You know what I mean? Like something just, Something just held me back. It, it wouldn't. It wouldn't let me jump. And now it was real quick. It wasn't no. It wasn't no beat down or none of that. You know what I mean? It wasn't no beat down or none of that. But um, like it, it, it was real short. Like maybe they. Yeah, it was real short. You know what I mean? But um, uh, 
but I was supposed to be jumping in and something just wouldn't let me jump in. So it was real short and sweet and, and dude uh, pulled out a gun and dude ran after my two homeboys and he probably would have started blowing, but, uh, but he dropped the clip in his gun. So I guess it wasn't, it wasn't cocked. It wasn't, um, uh, I don't even know if his gun must not have been loaded. He was probably trying to pop the clip in and he dropped the clip. So it wasn't loaded or cocked or nothing, but he chased him and, uh, he tried to, he was trying to put the clip in and he dropped the clip and I was just standing there, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and then now think now, now, and, and that's how that happened. Right. So I felt like God just, he wouldn't let me, he wouldn't let me get involved in that. So, um, now, uh, shout out to 16, the life man on the YouTube. Now check this out though. That's one of the worst things you can do is, uh, if you supposed to be riding with your homies and you don't ride. That's one of the worst things you can do, like on some street stuff, besides being a snitch, besides being a rat or besides being like on some gay stuff or something like that. Like not riding with your homies is one of the is one of the worst things you could do. But uh, but that's what let me know I was set apart. But at the same time, like I didn't really I didn't. uh it, it didn't really make my name bad because of the fact that the same dude that they jumped, like I got in a fight with him before that and I did more damage to do than my two homies. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm, 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 I'm going to keep it 100, man. I, I got in a fight with dude one-on-one. -on -one. You know, what I mean, it's a backstory to that. I ain't gonna get in. I ain't gonna get into that. But I, I was trying to do business, intoxicated. So I was doing business with dude, intoxicated, and uh, and I end up taking a loss. But dude gave me a pat to uh to to get back on my feet with. You know what I mean? But um, but he was taking kind of he was taking a little longer. You know, than I wanted him to take. So me and dude end up getting into a fight. And I did more damage to do than uh, my two homeboys did when they jumped him. But like I said, he he pulled the gun out. So, so that's the only thing I never got. I never really got called out for being a coward or a buster or nothing like that because me and dude already handled our situation and it was one on one. So when I wouldn't jump in, it didn't. It didn't. I never. You know what I'm saying? Like, dudes couldn't really say nothing because I already handled dude by myself. You know what I mean? So it wasn't like, it wasn't a fear thing. It was just, just something wouldn't let me jump in. You know what I mean? So like, I was, I was, and I, I never really liked jumping, but I, I'd done it before, but it wasn't about no beef. It was about some robbery stuff. You know what I'm saying? When I jumped somebody, when I was a part of jumping somebody, it was more about robbery than it was beef. But anyway, I, I wasn't really with all the jumping. But if you gonna gang bang, that's part of the that's part of it. You know what I mean? But that's just something that was different about me. I was set apart. You know what I mean? But I never um I never got nobody ever checked me about that. But now that I look back at it, that's one of the worst things you can do is is not ride with your with your homies if y'all supposed to be jumping somebody or something like that. If you give your word and say that's what you're gonna do, if you say you gonna help and you don't, that's you know that that's a real mark against you. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to like gang banging or something like that, that's a real mark against you. But I didn't get no whole lot of flack about it because I wasn't scared to fight. And I was a hustler, so I had money, you know what I mean? So, you know, people were, uh, people uh, got the tendency to let stuff slide when you got the weed, you got the money, you doing your thing. And, you know what I'm saying, you're not really a coward, but a situation like that, you know what I mean? So I, I didn't really catch no whole lot of flack, not, not to my face, but I do look back on it like that's one of the worst things you can do. 
you know what I'm saying, on some street stuff, on some gang banging stuff is not right with your homies, especially when you gave your word and said you was. But but I also look at it like that's just one of the things that showed that I was set apart. You know what I mean? And then behind my back, though, I probably got talked bad about or, you know what I mean? But but I, at the end of the day, like dudes knew I wasn't no coward. So dudes never came at me like that. But that's one of the main things that showed that I was set apart. Like my heart was just a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? My homies wasn't evil and I wasn't just holy. You know what I'm saying? But the grace of God on my life, I was I was just a little different. That's what it is when you set apart. You still human. You know what I mean? You still human, but it's it's just something a little different. Like you you have a certain conviction that somebody else might not have. And then not to mention, if I would have jumped in dude might not have dropped the clip when, when dude, if dude would have reached, if I would have jumped in, if dude would have went for the gun, he might not have dropped the clip. And then if somebody got hit, it might've been me. Cause their situations, another situation was when I got jumped in the club, you know what I mean? And, and it, it, it wasn't nothing. I, I took the responsibility Cause I was on that, on that drink, you know what I'm saying? Being disrespectful, just being too wild, you know what I mean? But, um, but like a week later, now this didn't have nothing to do with me, you know, but, uh, a week later, this dude got killed, you know what I'm saying? In, in my city. Right. And, um, it ain't, it ain't really too much of a connection, but he was, he went to the same high school, um, where the, the, the dudes that, that had jumped me and where I had got jumped at and the dudes that had jumped me. Now, I don't know if they was connected with each other, but uh, they was all from like the same area, same high school, but they was like older. But dude was a young cat. But um, but anyway, the point is like dude didn't really have nothing to do with the situation, but, but a dude, I guess he had tried to jump in or something and and he wasn't even the one that was really beefing, but he ended up getting killed. So, like, I kind of look back at that, like, the same thing could have happened to me. Like, when you set apart, you can get swept up with the crowd and and, and be the one that, that, that get the, the short end of the stick. You know what I'm saying? When you set apart, you could be with the homies and do something, and you the one catch the most time, or you the one get smoked. You know what I'm saying? Like when when you set apart, it can it can it can go bad for you. You know what I mean? But I you know I don't know, man. I I, I ain't gonna too much try to speak on that. But uh, all I know, man, that right there was one of the defining moments that we were similar in a lot of ways, but it was it was just something about me that was a little bit different. You know what I mean? That that right there. You know what I'm saying? But I, that's really one of the one of the worst things you could do, but but at the same time, like I wasn't, I was always willing to get down for mines. So I ain't really, I never had nobody press up on me or nothing. And it, and it wasn't no issue. You know what I mean? I ain't, I ain't had too many people press up on me or nothing like that. I had situations that could have been something, but it fizzled out. You know what I mean? Uh, I ain't never had no whole lot of problems with nobody trying to press up on me. You know what I mean? I wasn't scared to fight and I had weapons. And we'll use them, you know what I mean? So I ain't, I ain't never had nobody press up on me or nothing. I ain't never had no whole lot of problem with no bully or none of that, you know what I mean? But 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 low key, nobody never really came to me with it. But that's one of the worst things you could do, though, you know what I mean? But it also showed me I was set apart. But uh, sometimes when you set apart, but see, one thing I also learned, too, like I learned like I, I I learned to be an individual, you know what I'm saying? Like it was easy for me to get caught up in the group, but God set me apart. Like as an individual, you know what I'm saying? You can get to running with the crowd and the crowd directing your movement and something bad happened to you. Like 
if I wouldn't have developed a, 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 a more of a, I guess you could call it a leader or you could call it like an eagle because eagles fly alone. Like if I wouldn't have developed an individual mentality, like I probably like something bad would have happened to me, like just running with the crowd, like letting somebody else dictate my movements. It would have went bad for me. Like God had to separate me. And that was one of the defining moments. And then another thing that made me different than everybody else, like when, when I was younger and I was in the streets and everything. But but one thing about me, though, um, I, I was just different, man. You know what I'm saying? He he had a he had a calling on my life that had me set apart. I was doing a lot of what other people was doing, but I wasn't doing everything that other people was doing. You know what I mean? And uh, he just kind of had me, he had me set apart now that I look back. See, back then, I didn't really know I was set apart, but but I kind of did know, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I, I had a relationship with God way back then, even though I was in the streets and all that. Like, I had a relationship with God, though. And, um, yeah, he, he kept me, he kept me, he kept me set apart, man. One thing, another thing that was a sign of me being set apart was like, I wasn't, I, I wasn't involved in a whole lot of sexual activity. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody else was doing their thing or whatever. And, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't really into that. I was more like, intro, I was more like sexually introverted, you know what I'm saying? Like, like masturbation and stuff like that, but I wasn't messing with a whole lot of chicks and stuff like that. Um, I was actually like uncomfortable, like when it came to, when it came to sex. So that was something that was different about me. You know what I mean? And, uh, but later on in life, it, 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 the pendulum swung and that's what it was all about. You know what I'm saying? But, but in my younger days though, I was just hustling, getting, uh, getting high, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and that was about it. You know what I mean? But, uh, but yeah, he had me set apart though, man. But that was one of the defining moments, man. Just when there was a situation when I was supposed to jump in and, and God just, now I know it was God. I didn't know then. I just, just something wouldn't let me like, nah, like don't, don't get into that. And then next thing you know, dude pulled the gun. My homie and them started running. Dude tried to chase him, but he dropped the clip. And then, like, he, uh, then this what Cuz said to me. This what dude said to me. He was like, uh, like, he, he shook my hand for not jumping in. But then he was like, he was like, you need to leave them alone. They gonna get you in trouble. Like, we all street dudes. And me and dude, the dude that they jumped, and me, we was hustlers. So we used to do business and stuff But before we got into it. But he was like, he was like, he was like, your homie's gonna get you in trouble. So like even he knew I was set apart. Like if you if you go back and look at it, you know what I mean? So yeah, like when you set apart, man, but 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 check this out. Like when God sets you apart, he sets you apart so he can save your life. Cause running with the crowd can get you killed. You know, like it's people in the crowd who gonna get knocked down. It's people in the crowd who going to catch a lot of time and catch a life sentence and catch a lot of prison time. It's people in the crowd who going to get killed and who going to die. You know what I mean? So if, if God don't set you apart, then you can you can be the one that end up like that. And when God sets you apart, there's people who did any and everything and still got saved. So he set you apart for salvation, but he also set you apart for the purpose and the calling that's on your life. See, if I wouldn't have been set apart, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have got saved and, and filled with the Holy Ghost when I was 20. You know what I'm saying? Like he had a calling for me at an early age. Like I, I really got into the calling of God at an early age, like 20, like that's young. So he had to set, set me apart in my teenage years so I could have that experience with God when I was 20 and then really get into the ministry and stuff at a young age. So that's why he, he set you apart, not just for the sake of salvation, but for the sake of your purpose and your calling 
and the time that he wants you to start that. Cause God, like say this, like God might allow you to get saved at 38 and, uh, and you start your ministry at the age of 40. So you might not have been really set apart in your teenage years. You know what I'm saying? Timing, timing have everything to do with it. You know, it, it was, it was meant for me to, to really get saved, really get filled with the Holy Ghost, really start ministry at a young age. So I had to be set apart early. See, timing is everything. But but really, everybody is really set apart. You know what I mean? But it's, it's, there's different degrees, if, 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 I'm, if I'm making sense. You know what I'm saying? But the closer you get to your purpose in Christ, the more, the more he sets you apart. Because you're not going to find your purpose and your destiny in Christ. You're not going to find it in the crowd. So he had to set you in. It's mi- a million ways to set a person apart. You know what I'm saying? He can set you apart, set you apart physically. Like if you in jail, if you locked up or if, if you in some type of isolated situation, you know what I'm saying? He can set you apart like that, but he can set you apart. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. He can set you apart without that. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember uh, the closer I got to my, to my purpose and really meeting God in a, in a, in a extraordinary way, I remember that anxiety kicked in. I remember when I stopped feeling comfortable around people. I remember when I stopped feeling uh, comfortable in groups. See, that just came to my mind. You know what I'm saying? When I was like 18, 19, 20, like I stopped really, I, I felt more comfortable by myself. And a lot of time when I was by myself, I was watching spiritual stuff, stuff about God, you know what I mean? Because I had already got saved at a young age, but then I, I got away, got into the streets and all that. But then when God started pulling me back, watch this, according to purpose and plan, the purpose and plan and the calling on my life, he started pulling me back. But I didn't I didn't have to be locked up or I ain't have to really be isolated. I began to isolate myself because I felt like less and less comfortable around groups and around people and the same people I used to kick it with and all that, I stopped feeling, I didn't feel as comfortable. I felt more comfortable by myself. And when I was by myself, I spent a lot of time seeking the Lord. So, uh, yeah, being set apart is real, but he set me apart or I, you already set apart. You know what I mean? If, If you end up getting saved, you are, you was already set apart. You just might not have known it, but I, I, I started to, he started to really, cause you are like, God already know how it's going, how it's going to go. But he started, he started separating me. I guess you could say that like in my, in my teenage years, I say probably about 18. That was when, you know what I'm saying? My understanding start changing. I, I started my my discernment started to increase, and then I realized that everybody that's around you really ain't 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 your friend and stuff like that. Like I I started learning all that type of stuff, but that's when he was he was setting me apart. You know what I mean? And yeah, man, you know what I mean. But it was it was something different. You know what I'm saying? He say a different spirit, a different spirit was in Joshua, a different spirit was in Caleb. They were set apart. You know what I mean? And 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 the thing about God is you set apart before you ever get saved. You set apart before you ever answer the, the, the call of God that's on your life or ministry or whatever. Like you was already set apart. But then there's a time in your life when he began to, to manifest the set apart. He, he began to actually separate you like your mind and your thinking and, and you know what I'm saying? It, 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 I'm trying to explain it, man. Like you could get saved at a hundred years old, but you were set apart your whole life. So let's get that straight. But number two, there's a time in your life when the fact that you set apart, it actually begins to manifest. That's the only way I can say it. Uh there's times in your life when God really 
he really begins to show you that you set apart. You you start to recognize that you set apart. You start to discern and feel that you set apart. He starts to separate you. You stop thinking like the people that's around you or, or your thinking starts to become different than the people that's around you. I'm trying to explain it. Hey, whoever is for, they going to get it though. Whoever is for that, they, they going to get it. You know what I'm saying? Lord, give them understanding because you know, you know what I'm trying to say. And uh, whoever is for, they going to get it though. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, he began to manifest your, your being set apart. You know what I mean? And you start to not be on the same page. Situations come up circumstances come up where you're not on the same page no more with the people that's around you. You know what I'm saying? That's the, that's God doing that, doing that set apart work. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. And, and like I said, like I talk about in my songs, how I, I didn't have the heart to separate myself. So God had to separate me. He can allow situations and circumstances, you know what I'm saying? Where, uh, where he actually separates you. You don't have a mind. You don't have a wisdom. You don't have a spiritual understanding to separate yourself. So he have to do it. He have to allow situations and circumstances to arise that show that you not the same as the people in the crowd. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it was stuff like that. You know what I mean? And and because because I wouldn't, there was ways that I wouldn't like everybody else. I was doing a lot of what other people were doing, but I wasn't doing everything that 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 the people around me was doing. So that was part of the working out the the separation, working out the being set apart. You know what I mean? And uh, so yeah, he he set me apart in a, in a couple ways, man. Like I said, I was I was sexually awkward. Like uh, I just I wasn't comfortable having sex. Like that's the only way to say it. You know what I mean? I was jacking off and all that, but I wasn't comfortable having sex. And and then the uh, situation where I didn't jump in. So like just stuff like that has set me apart. And then a lot of times when the crowd or the world recognize you, you, you when they recognize you set apart, you know what I'm saying? Um, sometimes they'll separate themselves from you or you'll just begin to recognize that... Um, like I said, I started recognizing that all your homies really ain't homies and stuff like that. So then you might separate yourself. It's a mixture. It's a mixture of people separating from you and you separating from them and you just not feeling comfortable. And and like I said, you get to the point where you just feel more comfortable, isolated or by yourself. But at the same time, you by yourself, you seeking the Lord, you interested in God but you still worldly in your ways. You know what I mean? So that that's how it went for me. But like I said, 2004 was, was my year. I went off and on. I went off and on selling weed. Uh, I went off and on hustling. Uh, but then like September, you know what I'm saying? I had a August, September was like breakthrough moments. God revealed my calling, my ministry calling, my prophetic calling. September, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. This in 2004, you know what I mean? And uh, and really got a went on a six year run with the Lord before I backslid. But I really got a got a good foundation, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, be, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So then, but then I developed a, a individualistic mentality rather than a group mentality. Instead of like, he took me out of just being a follower. You know what I mean? Because when you get into the world, you a follower. Somebody else got to show you. You know what I'm saying? I remember being around somebody else that was selling weed before I started selling weed. You know what I'm saying? I remember, uh, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you pick up that stuff. You know, I didn't get it in my household. I got it from the streets. So, you know what I'm saying? You, you basically a follower. You know, it's the streets is a whole new world. So then, you know, you have to be taught, you learn, you pick up habits and, and stuff like that. So, um, so you basically a follower, you know what I mean? So God had to take me out of being a follower 
And he took me out of that group mentality. Plus, I was raised, I wasn't the only child, but I was raised kind of like an only child. I was the only child in the house for a long time. So I'm the youngest. So, so, uh, it, it, it kind of just got me out of that group, out of that follower mentality. And and when God separated me, it, it I developed more of an individualistic mentality. I don't want to say selfish, but but I just say uh, individual. You know what I'm saying? That group stuff would have got me messed up, especially when I was young. Being a follower, if God didn't separate me, it, it, it wouldn't. I don't think it would have went well for me. You know what I mean? But he separated me. So I had, I developed more of an individualistic mentality rather than a group mentality. You know what I'm saying? But also a leader mentality. Because if you're an individual, then you got to lead yourself. You ain't following nobody. You know what I mean? Except the Lord. So when he separated me, he gave me more of like an individualistic mentality, but also a leader mentality. I wasn't finna just let anybody lead me. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you serve in the Lord, you get on fire for God. You you definitely ain't finna let anybody just lead you in any direction. You know what I mean? So it and that that's really when I turned to a gorilla, man. When I was really in the world when I was young and I was a follower, I really wasn't no gorilla. I was trying to figure it out. But when God separated me, he filled me with the Holy Ghost. And then I, I had to, but I, I went through, you know what I'm saying, a lot of mental uh, uh, anguish and, and stuff like that. Just, you know what I'm saying, growing, developing. And like I said, anxiety is one of the main things that, that God used to make me separate myself. You know what I mean? And uh, just going through all that, like when I first came to the Lord, the first the first six years, like I, I had real bad, I, I say social anxiety. And uh, just developing all the stuff that they had got on me, all the deliverance and stuff that I had to go through and all the mental strain that I went through and just growing in the Lord and growing into a man. You know, what I'm saying that's when I that's when I, I say became a gorilla. When I was young, I, I wasn't no gorilla. You know, what I'm saying I was more of a follower. But then when God separated me and began to groom me. And grow me in the Lord, like I he 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 molded me into a gorilla. Like I really, yeah, like he he really molded me into a gorilla. So then when I went back into the world, you know, I was on gorilla status. You know what I mean? Wasn't nobody calling my shots, and I knew that I was separated, and I had an individual mentality. That's why I've been jumped multiple times, and uh. And, you know, what I'm saying, and yeah, that's why <laughs> that's why I've been jumped multiple times. And uh, and that's just the way I move. I move the way I move. I'm, I'm militant. Um, yeah, that, that that's But I stand on business. I stand on business. You know, what I mean, like God made me a gorilla. That's why I say a gorilla prophet. You know, what I mean, God, God separated me. He set me apart. You know what I'm saying? He he made me a man. He made me a gorilla. He made me a soldier. You know what I'm saying? In 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 the spirit and in the natural. You know what I'm saying? And and I stand on business. And uh and I, I'll say this right here, like I'll say this right here, like he like I don't know if you ever heard somebody say this, like God, God don't play about me. You know what I'm saying? God, he don't he don't play about me like stuff happens, like stuff shake. You know what I'm saying? Like it, a lot of time it ain't even me. Like when something happened, like the retaliation and the repercussion, like it ain't even got to have nothing to do with me. Like a lot of times it's retaliation and it's repercussions that I ain't even had nothing to do with. You know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, he 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 don't play about me. You know what I'm saying? But I, I stand on business. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't I don't mind going against the grain. I don't mind if everybody else is going one way and I'ma stand up and go the other way. Like he made me like that. You know what I'm saying? Like he 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 forged me in the fire, the furnace of affliction. You know what I mean? And that's how I got strong. That's how I became 
who I am. You know what I'm saying? That that's how I became who I am though. You know, and yeah, he he made me a soldier. He made me a gorilla. I stand on business. I don't, I don't go for anything and will deal with the consequence of not going along with anything. You know what I mean? So and and that's of great benefit spiritually and naturally. You know what I mean? But uh but yeah, man, if he wouldn't have set me apart, all that gang stuff and all that, like that, that, that wasn't for me. But because I'm a soldier and because I got a street background, I can mix with them cats. But when it comes to all that gang stuff, I, I leave that alone. You know what I'm saying? But I, I was infatuated with it because God had set me apart and showed me I was different and that wasn't for me. And sometimes when something ain't for you, you can become like infatuated with it. But but I learned as I got older, like, you know what I'm saying? It, it's you you have to count the cost of what can happen. And if you if you don't want that and you ain't willing to pay that price or you don't want to pay that price, there's certain things that you that you leave alone. Like I wouldn't want to die behind gang banging. I wouldn't want to die behind, you know what I'm saying, no gang stuff. I wouldn't want to kill behind no gang stuff. I wouldn't want to do no time behind no gang stuff. I, would, I don't even want to fight over no gang stuff. But if it got anything to do with standing for the Lord, I'm with everything. If it got anything to do with just standing on business as a man, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm with all that. You know what I'm saying? But you just have to count the cost of what it's worth to you. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I, I got caught up in the gang culture when I was young. But God, he set me apart, showed me that wasn't for me. You know what I mean? But but I am a soldier, though. You know what I'm saying? But just not for that. You know what I'm saying? You got to decide what you want to what you want to stand on and what you want to stand for. So that that's what my being set apart was all about. And if it wouldn't have went that way, I probably would have died trying to run with a group or run with a crew or run with a gang. Probably would have caught a whole lot of time or died. And it would have threw off the, the timing for, for me to answer the call of God on my life for salvation for for holiness, for the ministry, it would have, you know what I'm saying, it would have threw off the plan. And God ain't he ain't too much gonna let them throw off the plan if the individual wants to uh be in cooperation with God, if the individual wants to answer the call of God, if the individual wants to do what God wants them to do, if they got a willing heart and a willing mind, then God ain't too much gonna let them throw off the plan. You know what I'm saying? His plan is very serious. He's really calculated. You know what I mean? And uh he don't he don't play. You know, God don't play, man. Like, you know, yeah, his his counsel will stand if an individual is willing to to go along with it. You know what I'm saying? But but he do give us free will. So you can resist God and usually something bad gonna happen. You know what I mean? If Esther would have resisted. He said deliverance is in rescue, deliverance and enlargement is going to come to the Jews, but it's going to come another way. But you and your people, you and your family going to get going to get wiped out. You know what I mean? So if you don't answer the call of God, his purpose is still going to be fulfilled. But the one who don't want to let God use them, you know, what I'm saying probably something bad going to happen to him. That's just how that go. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that's the first part, man. Just some stuff about being set apart. But that was one of the main moments, you know what I'm saying, when I was supposed to be jumping in and I didn't. You know, I didn't get the jacket of a coward or a buster just because, like I said, me and dude had already handled our situation. But it was known that I would fight. But when I was supposed to jump in, I wouldn't. So that that really set me apart as far as some gang stuff that really was a mark against me, you know, saying then nobody never try to get at me about it. But that's one of the the main things that's a mark against you. And then I also ended up being a flip flop. But a flip flip flopping ain't really if you change gangs, that's not really a big deal unless you go from unless you join an enemy gang. You know, what I'm saying like. If you move neighborhoods and you go from one gang to another gang, 
it's not really a big deal unless it's an enemy set. Like if you go from one gang and then you join an enemy gang, like that's an issue. If you go from like a blood to a crip or something like that, people going to get on you about that. I never did that. But, uh, but yeah, if you join, if you go from one gang to another gang and them two gangs is enemies, like, yeah, you, you probably going to have problems at some point. I never really had no problems though. People will speak against being a flip flop, but the truth is it's a lot of people that flip flop just because of the fact people ain't going to live in the same place all the time. You know what I mean? You might be, you might live in one neighborhood from 12 to 15, then you might move to another hood, you know what I'm saying, when you 15 and join another gang. So ain't, ain't nobody really going to too much ride you for being a flip flop, but unless, unless your name bad, like you done snitched or you done, you know what I'm saying, uh, got caught up in some, some gay stuff or something like that. Or like I said, when you post to jump in and you don't ride with your homies, like that's like one of the worst things. So, um, I can't say that that really followed me though. I can't say that really followed me, but if anything, God set me apart. You know, I, like I said, I never really got no flack about that, but now that I look back at it, like, yeah, that's one of the main violations. Like, that's a mark on your name as far as the streets is concerned. But I didn't ever have no no flack about it because, like I said, it was known that I would fight. So I never I never really got called out about that. But it just showed that I was different. It just showed that I had a conviction that was different than everybody else. I ain't never really like jumping people, though. I ain't never like jumping nobody. You know what I mean? And then, like I said, just the way I move, I really became a solo dude and then got back in the street. So, you know, I, I've been in I've been in several situations and got jumped different times. But uh, but like I said, it, it, it always be some get back without me even having nothing to do with it. And, and you know, what I mean, so. Yeah. But anyway, that's just a little, little, little stuff about being set apart, man. The closer you get to, to answering the call of God for salvation, for ministry or whatever, when God really working in your life, he sets you apart and you start to feel the set apart. He start to manifest the fact that you set apart. The closer you get to your purpose, calling, destiny, salvation, call of ministry, answering the call of ministry, all that, man. I, I could I could talk more, but but I'm finna change subjects though.